everyone, welcome to our Crazy Life Scotland and probably the hardest video I've ever had to make and hopefully ever will have to make. Mm. A lot of you may know that we very sadly lost our Leonberger Rannoch back in March and that it was very sudden. I did promise to make a video about it but to be honest I've just not been able to until now. I've tried a few times but hopefully I'll manage this time with lots of interruptions from the other dogs and probably the cat. Willa, what are you doing? <laughs> Oi! <laughs> oh, dearie me. Um, so, what I will say is, I don't want this video just to be about Rannach's passing. I want it to be like a memorial to him. So, I'm going to tell you all his story, basically, from when he was born, when we got him, and all the rest of it, his life with us, or our life with him really. And we were lucky to have him for five years, so uh, there's a lot of funny things as well as, I do have to warn you, it will get a bit sad if you're like me and you get easily upset when it comes to dogs and animals. This might not be the video for you, I'm just warning you. I want to make it a happy video, but we do know it doesn't have a happy ending, unfortunately. So. What I'm going to do is pop little photos and video clips in as I'm talking just to um, just to illustrate exactly what I'm meaning because he was quite the character. But before I get started, I just want to show you my t-shirt. So my mum got me this t-shirt after Rannoch passed and it says, Everyone has a guardian angel, but lucky ones have a Liam Berger. And that is a picture of our gorgeous Rannoch. I'm filling up already, folks. I'm filling up already. Bear with me. Yeah, so my mum had that made for me, just as a wee reminder of him. And I think it's lovely. She got one for Jack as well. Um, right, so. Come on in. Now we've got Molly involved. Right, so for anyone who doesn't know what a Leonberger is, it's a giant breed of dog which originates from Leonberg in Germany. And they basically wanted a dog which looked like a lion as the sort of mascot of the town, if you like. So they bred a Newfoundland, Great Pyrenees and St Bernard. And that's how they came up with the Leonberger. And they do look a little bit like a lion when they're all properly groomed and they've got their big mane. But to be honest, they're more like a big teddy bear. They're just amazing amazing dogs they're very rare you don't see a lot of them um everywhere we went with them people were stopping and asking what he was because he was just such a gorgeous big dog and huge uh, the amount of people that said uh, oh you should put a saddle on him and charge for pony rides and things like that and uh, what on earth do you feed him you're like well whatever he wants you're not stopping him <laughs> no he really he wasn't like that at all um so yeah, that's the origins of the Leonberger. Now, we had always wanted, a, well, Jack had always wanted a St Bernard. And I was right up for that as well. But then I discovered the Leonberger, which was a similar size, but didn't drool as much. And I thought, excellent, good choice. So we ended up getting Rannoch. Now, because they are rare, it's hard to find breeders. So I, we had our name down with a breeder for a wee while. Then we discovered that... Um, her bitch was expecting and we were told that we were getting one of the puppies. So on the 12th of December 2015, Rannoch was born and he was just a tiny wee thing. I mean him and all his litter mates, I think there was maybe seven of them, were just the most gorgeous, gorgeous, adorable little balls of fluff. And we went down at the end of January to pick which one we wanted. Now, the breeder was in Bury St. Ed Bury St Edmund, right down the bottom of England, so it was a long drive for us, but we weren't caring. So we went down and all these wee puppies were running about. Oh, it was adorable. But we picked Rannoch. There was just something about him that we just loved and straight away he came to us. He wasn't strange and he was happy to sit on our knee. He wasn't strange with my wheelchair either, which was important to us. I didn't want a, a pup that was going to be scared of the wheelchair. And yeah, we, we were like, yep, yeah, this is the guy for us. 
and we chose the name Rannoch because I had a dream that that's what he was called and we were like yeah quite like that and so two weeks later it was actually Valentine's Day 2016 Jack and I drove down again to pick him up we drove down ourselves this time with our old husky Storm who we had at the time and um we brought him back up in the car and that was a fun journey because it was a long time to have such a tiny wee puppy but oh it was just a dream come true when we brought him home and he fitted in right from the word go he was such an amazing pup he really was of course he did like to get up to mischief as puppies do but given the size of him it was giant sized mischief and he would steal slippers he's a Stolbrook slipper and kept running away from her thinking it was a great game. Yeah. That's Brooks slipper runner. <laughs> That's Brooks. <laughs> That's not yours. And he would spill his food all over the place just for the hell of it. Just just to do it. He would just go like that with his paw and the dry food would go everywhere. He ripped up his bed, just the usual puppy things, but it was so much fun. Even as a puppy, he got on so well with other dogs and everybody he met. He was, he was never strange with anyone, he was never strange with any other dogs. I think it helped that we had the husky and that he'd grown up around loads of other dogs as well um, with the breeder. And before he was... <laughs> Bless you, Willa. Before he was old enough to actually walk outside, we used to take him out on my knee in the wheelchair. So we would go for walks around the park with old Storm and he would be on my, my knee and just looking at everybody. And of course, a 10 minute walk took half an hour because everybody stopped to talk to him because he was just so, so cute. It was amazing. <laughs> Come on, <man. laughs> gonna lift always loved being outside right from a pup he would just lie out the back quite happy he would dry out lie out the back whether it was raining whether it was snowing whether it was sun shining he didn't care and of course they would get up to mischief out there as well he knocked over a, he chewed and knocked over one of jack's big plants and he looked at us as if to say what the plant fainted i'm just looking after it um, he was chewing at the, the sort of rope swing type thing that we had for the girls and he got himself all stuck in that. Just, it was hilarious. There was never a dull moment when Ranach was a pup, I'll tell you. Right from the word go, he thought he was a lap dog. And of course, when he was a tiny puppy, he was a lap dog. But as he grew bigger, it got a bit harder to have him on your knee. But right to the end, he would still lie on your knee occasionally. Not all the time, but he would still lie on your knee and he was just heavy but adorable you couldn't move him because a he was too heavy and b because he was just so adorable lying there and you we always thought to ourselves you know what he needs cuddles as well it's not his fault he's huge he um, sees the other dogs lying on their knee why wouldn't he he loved the girls right from the start absolutely loved them and played with them constantly, he knew not to be rough with them, especially Brooke because she was really young, but he would snuggle up with them, he would play with them, he just absolutely adored them, he would follow them about, make sure they were okay, and yeah, absolutely adorable with them. Because he was so big, he was really funny when he walked, he would just sort of stomp about the place like that and uh, when he, he was running it was brilliant to watch and when he was young especially it was hilarious because his ears would flop as he ran and we've got a couple of slow motion um, videos of him running so I'll pop them in for you. <laughs> enough to reach the worktop in the kitchen so we had to be very careful if anything was lying about because he would be able to grab it he was so big that he would actually just lay his chin on the worktop and look at you when you were preparing food as if to say is any of that for me and if you were making bacon he was right there and oh just he wasn't a greedy dog but he did like his food and if there was food around he would go and use the big puppy dog eyes to try and get some from you 
especially ice cream. When he was 10 months old, we did a devil walk for charity and I basically did it in my wheelchair and we all dressed up and we got Rana and Storm dressed up as well um, and he really enjoyed that and again it took so much longer to do the walk than it had to because of everybody looking at him and um, he, he just loved to play and he would play hide and seek and everything. He was really great off the lead um, right from the start. His recall was really good so he was always off the lead and he loved playing hide and seek with Jack. Um, it was just absolutely hilarious. Jack also used to love taking them up the hills as well. Jack loves hill climbing. So yeah, he loved going up the hills as well. He was a great companion for Jack when he was doing things like that, especially as Storm got too old to do it. It meant that Jack still had um, his dog to go with him. And then of course there was his first Christmas, which was fun. First Christmases are always fun. He did destroy a little wooden reindeer that we got and every toy that he got, he destroyed as well. But it was just so much fun. It was hilarious when he was playing it looked like he was dancing it was like he was shuffling he would get something and sort of pounce hit it like that and uh, we used to say that he was dancing watch this <laughs> Every day I'm shuffling and he would give it that all the time and even the night before he passed away he was doing that as well so it was something that he did right from a pup right to the very end it was so sweet and if you were giving him a row he would be quite sassy and he would do that as well and he would sort of pounce like that and then he would shuffle and you just couldn't be mad at him for anything because he was just so cute <laughs> He was a very good guard dog. If anybody came near the house, the postman, um, he would go absolutely nuts. He would bark at the window. He would actually jump at the window. And given his size, it definitely put people off. <laughs> we weren't going to get robbed anytime soon when we had Ranach. Um, I mean, you can imagine him, you know, when he was fully grown, he was 60 odd kilograms. And that pounce that we've got French doors on our uh, going out onto our terrace. So whenever he saw anybody coming towards the house, he would pounce, like, jump straight up with his legs, paws straight up on the doors like that and bark. And of course, everybody's like, whoa. Once they realised that he was a big softie, it was fine. But it was that initial, oh my God. And I was sure he was going to go through the window one of these days. I really was, but he didn't, thankfully. And he would always sit at the window every time Every day when it was time for Jack to come home from work, he would sit at the window and watch for him. And you knew before Jack even pulled into the street that he was there because whether Rana could hear the car or whatever, he knew before we could see him, the tail would go and he would get all excited. And then as soon as Jack came in the door, he would run up to him and put his paws on Jack's shoulder and give him a big cuddle. <laughs> just so sweet and again that's something that he did every single day even until the end okay well i just you shove your way in here um yeah even to the very end that is what he did as soon as jack came home he would put his paws up on his shoulders and give him a cuddle his favorite things were definitely being outside especially in the snow he loved oh hello Ella. he absolutely loved playing in the snow <laughs> He loved being outside, he loved playing all the time, he loved going for walks, he loved being in the caravan, absolutely, hello I see you, yes, am I talking about Ranach? He absolutely loved being away in the caravan with us, going to Candy Cross events because he could see so many other dogs. And his favourite thing also was cuddles. Loved cuddles. 
and he would cuddle the girls, he would cuddle me, he would cuddle anybody that was willing to cuddle him, he would, but I'm talking a proper cuddle, he would actually lean right in on you, um, and again we called him a leaning burger rather than a lean burger because he leaned on you and he was so heavy he would practically knock you over, but that was him giving you a cuddle, he would lie on your feet as well and that was him keeping you safe, he always loved to be near someone, he was never a dog for being on his own, he just loved people or other dogs. He hated the Hoover. Hated the Hoover with a passion. Whenever the Hoover came out, he would go absolutely ballistic at it. He also hated Bubble Wrap. Right from when he was a puppy, and I don't know if that's where he got it from, but Rick had Bubble Wrap one time and was popping it, and it really freaked him out, and he would pounce at it, he would give it the shuffle in, and again, right until the end, whenever we got anything with Bubble Wrap, I had to hide it from him, or he would go crazy and try to actually bite it. And tried to take it out of your hand, it was like he thought it was a threat and he was trying to protect you from it. It was hilarious. One of the great things about him was we could take him anywhere. But even although he was a huge dog and he did have a tendency to knock things over, um, we could just take him anywhere. He had that kind of laid back nature. He loved being in the car or the van. We, we pretty quickly had to get a van because he was way too big for a car. And he just loved it. When he was young, uh, we took Jack and I went for a weekend to a dog friendly hotel up north and we took him and Storm with us and he was as good as gold. So good they even let us let them in the restaurant with us. And it was just amazing to to think that, oh, you know, a lot of people think, oh, you get a dog and that's it, it's the end of your social life. It really wasn't the case for Rana because he went everywhere with us. He was very, very rarely left in the house on his own. In fact, the dogs now, we've still got another three dogs and they're very rarely left in the house on their own as well. We've just always wanted to have them with us and we just think that it's nicer to have them when we can. And we also took him camping in the tent. Before we got the caravan, we had a tent and we took him camping in that, which was great except if he saw another dog out the wee little window bit of the tent and tried to pounce on that the way that he does with the windows and of course the whole tent would move and he did manage to rip the, the inner um, netting of the tent as well because he got excited seeing Jack come in and he was like that um, and managed to rip all the netting and then of course we got the caravan which was a lot better and he would basically take up the whole caravan lying on the floor. He also took him to dog friendly shops like go outdoors, he loved going into go outdoors and having a wee investigate around the place. And we even took him to Inverary Jail one weekend when it was my dad's 65th birthday I think when we first moved here and we went out for the day and one of the places we went was Inverary Jail and he was allowed in there as well. Grooming was a problem. <laughs> because he had a very quite a long coat and it would get very knotted and he would quite often start to get a bit smelly and needed a bath but he was too big to go in a bath so we would try to take him to quite often when we went away on caravan sites there was like outdoor dog washing areas or we would occasionally take him to the groomers to get clipped as well, but he really didn't like it. So it got to the stage that we would just shower him in the house because I've got like a sort of a, a walk-in, roll-in shower, if you like. So there was plenty of room to put him in there. And Jack would stand with the water and shampoo him and Brooke would get her swimsuit on and go in beside him and help him. Um, and just sort of keep him calm because he really didn't like getting a bath but he had to get one or else he was a stinky burger. Yeah. One thing we don't miss about him is the amount of hair that would come off him and the amount of muck that was all over the walls because he was so big and he would pad about the place like this he would come in with his dirty paws and go like that and it would all the mud would splash everywhere and he would come in and shake and the, the mud would go on the ceiling and everything when we moved here he absolutely loved going to the beach he was never much for never really a dog for going in the water which is quite surprising because the breed are actually known for water rescue and his brother like from his litter actually does water rescue as well and they have got the webbed paws but Rannick was never a fan of going in the water but when we moved here to the beach he actually got used to it and he would quite like it and you would throw stones into the water and he would go running after it and yeah he just he, he loved pouncing in and out of the water quite a lot and of course he loved being out on the terrace here as well because 
he was out in the fresh air and the wall on the on our terrace was just the perfect height for him to put his chin on and he could just sit there and watch everything that was going on and he just absolutely loved it. So that was Rana's life with us. We had him, like I said, for five years. Um, we got him in the February 2015. In fact, no, we got him in the February 2016 because he was born in 2015. And he passed away suddenly in the March of this year. So we had him for five years. Um, and this is where I'm going to get upset. Right, so this is a sad bit coming up. <laughs> if, you, if you want to leave now, you're more than welcome. But he was perfectly fine at night when we went to bed. He had been, like I said, being sassy, playing with Jack. Can't remember what he'd done and Jack was giving him a row for something, but joking. And he was pouncing and shuffling and giving it the woof, woof, like that, as he always did. Really funny. He was perfectly happy. There had been nothing different about him at all. Um, and... That night, he woke me up through the night and I thought, what's wrong with him? Because it's not like him to do that. And I thought, oh, what's wrong? So I came through to let him out and I noticed that he'd been really sick a few times. And I thought, oh dear, that's not like him. So I opened the door and let him out the back while I cleaned everything up. And everywhere I looked, there was another puddle of sick and I thought, oh, poor dog. Maybe he's eaten something. I, I don't know. It was really weird. So he was outside for a while. And then he came in and I went back to my bed and he just sat beside the bed staring at me and panting as if to say, Mum, there's something wrong. And I'm thinking, what is it? Just, you know, lie down. What's wrong? Um, and then he was sick again and I kept letting him out and it just didn't seem right. I just knew there was something not right. And I thought, okay, must have, he's maybe eaten something or just picked up a bug or something like that so in the morning I had said to Jack um there's something not right with Anna but thankfully Jack was off that day anyway and um Brooke had said is he okay and I said yeah I said he's been sick but he'll be fine so the girls went to school as normal and I thought I might just go and phone the vet. So at the back of it, I phoned the vet, but they were closed and they said, if it's an emergency, phone this number. And I said to Jack and he went, it's not really an emergency. He's just been sick. We just want him checked over. But then a wee while later, he walked through into the living room and usually when he lay down, he would go and sort of flop down. But this time it was like a collapse rather than flopping. And we thought, oh, that's weird. That is definitely not right. We're definitely going to have to phone the vet. And then my mum, Granny Annie, came in, as she does, and they always know that she's got biscuits. So all the, all the dogs always run to her. So he got up to go through to her, but as he went through, he totally lost his balance and fell sideways and collapsed on the floor again. And... We couldn't get through to the vet, it was just constantly engaged. So we decided just, it's an emergency now. So we put him in the van. Jack had to practically carry him to the van because he couldn't walk. I sat in the back beside him. He had his head down the whole time and he would occasionally look up at me. Sorry, I'm determined to get through this this time. So I just kept cuddling him and telling him he was a good boy and that we loved him and I kept kissing him and all the rest of it. Um, and then as soon as we got to the vets, I finally managed to get through on the phone and they came running out to the van and they said, well, we get the stretcher and Jack said, we'll see how he is and got him out of the van and he, he, he did manage to stand okay. So it was the vet and his daughter, uh, who's also a vet, they said, right, we'll take him in, you wait here just now, because it was locked down, so nobody was supposed to be in the vets. They basically would just collect the dog outside and take them in and then bring them back out to you. So obviously we were really worried sitting, waiting to see what was going on, and um, the vet said, could he have eaten any like rat poison or anything like that? And we're like, no, we make sure there's nothing like that lying about. Jack always watches him when he's off the lead to make sure that he's not picking up anything that he shouldn't. 
Um, so we were pretty sure that it couldn't be anything like that. Um, and they, they gave him a quick examination at the van and said his heart is going way too fast. Um, we'll need to go in and see what's going on. So they took him in. And the next thing, the the young girl, the daughter, came running out to us and said, you need to come in, I don't think it's going to last. So they were kind enough to let us go in with masks on, obviously, even though we really shouldn't have been. And when we went in, he was collapsed again on the floor. It's okay, Clyde, I'm okay. Oh, good boy. I'm okay, son. The dogs don't like me getting upset. Um, he was collapsed on the floor. They had oxygen on him and they were putting a drip in him and they basically said that they had no idea why but his heart was going way too fast. It was like um, atrial fibrillation that was just, it was fluttering rather than actually beating properly and they said so he's, the blood doesn't get around his system properly at all. We've got no idea why it's happening. They did an ultrasound on his uh, abdomen to see if there was any fluid anywhere um, and they couldn't see anything and they said you know we're, none of us here are heart specialists the only heart specialist is in Edinburgh and they wouldn't survive the journey through there and I said well could you even get them on the phone to see if there was anything that they could suggest so they went right okay so they let us stay with them for a while and um they said, right, well, we need to make sure he's hydrated. So they gave us a syringe with water and Jack was, you know, sort of squishing it into his mouth, trying to get him to get some water, even though they had the drip as well. And um, every now and again, he would look up at us and it would be like, oh, it's mum and dad. And he would try to get up and then he would fall again. Um, and then they decided, they spoke to the cardiologist, if you like, and they'd suggested a couple of drugs to try. So they tried the first one and it didn't help. And they said, you know, we've got this other one to try, but it could actually kill him. And we're like, well, if there's a chance it's going to help him, we need to do it because at this rate, he's not going to survive anyway. So they gave him that and it had no effect either. And they basically said to us, look, it's not looking good. I don't think there's anything we can do. We can't do surgery to find out what's going on because he wouldn't survive it. Um, it's really not looking good. All we can do is try and keep him stable for a while and see if his heart come heart rate comes down on its own. Um, so we said to them, well, can we get our children here so that they can say goodbye? Because... That morning we'd said to them, yes, yeah, he's, he's been sick, but he's okay. So they didn't know any different. And Abby's school is just five minutes along the road from the vets. So my husband went to get Abby and they asked if I would go outside again because he was basically as stable as he could be at that point. Um, so I went out and I phoned my mum and said, well, you go and get Brooke from school and bring her down. So they did that as well. And the vet said, right, if you leave him with us for a few hours, um, we'll see what we can do. We'll keep him as stable as we can and we'll let you know how he is. Um, but when Abby came, she, they did let us back in just for five minutes so that she could see him. And it was heartbreaking watching Abby cuddling on and saying goodbye to him. And she sat up his head for a while, cuddled him, spoke to him. And then she actually made the decision to go back to school. She said that she would be better around her friends. So we let her do that. It's okay, Molly. Oh, look. You're a good girl. <laughs> You're giving me cuddles. You're such a good girl. Yes. Yeah, so she went back to school. My mum and dad brought Brooke uh, into Helensburg to meet us. And we found ourselves with like time on our hands not knowing what to do so we ended up coming home for a wee while and then the vet phoned and said look he's not gonna get any better we've given him this time and it's cruel to keep him like that any longer he's really struggling so we said right okay we'll come down and they said if it's okay with you 
we're going to take him outside into the garden where, you know, it, we could be on our own with him, but have as much time as we wanted without worrying about being inside the vet because we weren't supposed to be. And we said, yeah, thankfully it was a nice night. So we said, yeah, that's fine. And we went down. When I first saw him lying outside there, he just looked like he was sleeping in the garden like I loved doing. Until I got up close to him and saw how much he was really struggling to breathe. God, I thought I was over it enough now to talk about it. And Abby had made the decision not to go back because she had already seen him and already said goodbye and she didn't want to upset herself again, which was perfectly fine. I mean, she's 16, it was her decision. Brooke, we gave her the choice because um, she's low and she's 11, but she's got Asperger's, so we weren't sure how she would cope with it. And she wanted to see him, she wanted to say goodbye, and she was brilliant. I mean, obviously she was upset, we were all upset. But the vet let us spend plenty of time outside with us, eh, with him. And eh, then the vet came out and said, look, we're, we're really going to have to do it now because it's no fair leaving like that. So we basically said everything that we wanted to say to him. We all cuddled him and kissed him, told him we loved him, as the vet gave him the gag. And he went to sleep and became our guardian angel. At that point, the vets then let us spend as long as we wanted with them again. I actually got out of my wheelchair and lay on the ground beside them, cuddling them. And I said to Jack, in a way, it was nice, the whole COVID thing, because it meant he was outside at the end where he loved being, he loved lying in the fresh air. So if he had to go, then that was the best place for him rather than in the fetch room. So then the, the vet obviously discussed... <laughs> Sorry about the kid jumping about. The vet obviously discussed what we wanted to do with him. Um, he's way too big for us to bring him back and bury him. And we made the decision to get him cremated alone, um, the same as we had done with Old Storm, so that we could get his ashes and know that it was just him. Because quite often um, dog cremations... It's a few dogs together, if you like, which sounds awful. Um, so you're getting other dog's ashes back as well as your own. And we didn't want that. And yeah, it was a lot more expensive, but we just wanted him back. So that's what we did. Um, and the vet said that they still had no idea what was wrong, that the chances are it looked like it could have been a heart problem that he'd had since birth that hadn't been picked up. And that, you know, he might have been struggling for quite a while, but nobody knew because he just coped so well and he was just such a good dog. Um, and even just before Christmas last year, he went in to have a lump removed from his tail that we thought was a tumour. And it was a tumour, but it wasn't malignant. Um, and the vet said that it definitely wasn't related to that. There didn't seem to be any other tumours anywhere. All these blood tests had came back saying that the cancer uh, that there wasn't cancer um, and that he was fine. So they're pretty sure it wasn't relating to that. And um, But even when he was getting that operation done and he was under the anaesthetic, nothing showed up with his heart then. And uh, yeah, it's just one of those things. And... Jack was like, well, how could it not show up? You know, when he's he's getting his heart, they're monitoring his heart closely during an operation, how can it not get picked up? And I just sort of likened it to, you gonna run? I just sort of likened it to when you get young fit footballers who just suddenly collapse on the football pitch and it turns out it was a heart problem that nobody knew they had. And regardless of what monitoring they'd had before it just wasn't picked up and that to me is the sort of thing that it was so I had to tell his breeder what had happened because she had been great she kept in touch with us since we got him since before um he was even conceived she was in touch with us a lot and she always sent him birthday presents and Christmas presents and things so I had to let her know and that was awful um and she basically said that something very similar happened to Rana's mum, that the vet thought she'd been poisoned 
and that her heart basically just gave out and she was quite young as well. I don't think she was as young as Rana, but she was quite young as well. And his dad, Rana's dad, also died of a heart problem. So we're pretty sure now that it was a genetic thing. And um, Rachel has now made people aware that it could be an issue and that they should, you know, any, any Leonbergers that came from that line should be checked just to be on the safe side. Um, she put it on her website and everything as well and a lot more people have been asking about it so it's raising awareness of issues like that as well which is really good. It was so hard to cope with when we lost Old Storm it was a lot easier to cope with because we knew for a while the time was coming and we all had plenty of time to make our peace with it and say goodbye to him um, and we knew when it was time to do it but we ran a being perfectly fine the night before and being his usual sassy self and then gone less than 24 hours later was it was just devastating and so much harder to cope with so about a week later we got him back we got his ashes back and what we're going to do is we're going to we're busy doing the front garden where Jack's building a ramp for me getting in and out of my wheelchair once that's done, we're going to plant two trees and one of them is going to have Storm's ashes under it and the other one is going to have Rannach's ashes under it. So that's going to be their sort of memorial trees, if you like. But what I've done in the meantime, as you might know, I'm into crafts and things. I got this lovely little wooden heart box and I just put a little paw with angel wings on the front and put Storm and Rannach on it. And... I put the um, infinity sign with an R and the, the heart and the paw for Ranach and I did the same with an S for Storm and inside it I put some lavender and little, I'm not going to show you ashes, don't worry, the little bags I put, I don't think I'm going to show you any, anyway, I put their names on them, so that's Storm's one, and Rana's got one in there as well. And there's just a little amount of their ashes in each bag. And it just means that I'm always going to have this little heart box with them in it with me. Regardless, I mean, if we were to move house or anything, not that we think we will, but if we if we were, obviously, we couldn't take the trees with us. Lomond! <laughs> that's a cat now playing with a cable on my tripod. Oi! Stop it! Lomond! Um, but I can always take this little heart box with me um, anywhere that I go. Sorry that you're swaying about the cat is playing. Oi, Chee Chee! That was the other thing with Rannick. We got the kitten just a couple of weeks before um, Rannick passed away, but he was brilliant with them, even though he was huge. I mean, he could basically fit the kitten in his mouth at once. You know, he could just go home. Um, and whenever he licked the kitten... It was like Lomond getting a bath, one lick and Lomond was soaking. Um, but he was just so affectionate that way. So yes, that is the story of our life with the gorgeous Ranach, our beautiful, handsome big teddy bear. They're known as gentle giants for a reason. They really are. They're just so gentle. They're huge and they're loud and their voice just, Lomond, stop it. Right, I'm going to take you off the tripod now because he's been an idiot. Um, they're huge, they're loud, they're boisterous, but they're the most amazing, loyal dogs, they really are. And it just seems so unfair that it was taken away from us at such a young age. You know, we had so much more that we wanted to do with them. And there's always going to be a huge, rather shaped hole in our heart, in our family. There's a lot of things that we won't miss. <laughs> like I said, the hair and the dirt, we won't miss that. The jumping at the window every time someone comes to the house, we won't miss that. Him barking at me when I was trying to make videos, the amount of times I was shouting at him, Rana, will you shut up, when I was trying to film a video. Um, the way that he was with his chicken wings, oh my god, he loved chicken wings, frozen chicken wings. It was his breeder that got us into that. She said, you know, they love it, it's good for their teeth, as long as you freeze them raw, don't cook them first then the bones won't splinter. So him and the other dogs always got a chicken win every single day and if I was late giving them it, he would bark at me until I gave him it. It was hilarious. Um, 
And now, you know, sometimes looking back on it, I wonder if the way that he was barking at me sometimes was his, his way of trying to tell me there was something wrong. But I'll never know. There's no point. I, I, I did beat myself up about that for quite a while, thinking, did I miss something? But that's natural, isn't it? Oh, dearie me. Right, I'm going to go now. I'm sorry for blubbering. And if you're do not a dog lover, you might think, for goodness sake, it's just a dog. He wasn't just a dog to us. He was her fur baby. He was as much a member of the family as Abby and Brooke are. And uh, yeah, we'll always miss him. But we'll always have these memories as well. So I'm just going to finish this video with a few other little photos that I've not already put in. Please feel free to comment down below. Like I say, I'm sorry for blubbering. I promise my next video will be a happier one. <laughs> I'll be back to my usual cheery self again. But I did promise everybody that I would make this video to let you know what happened to him because so many of you fell in love with him just watching him on their videos. And I know a lot of you did want to know what happened, but you were too nice to ask. So that's basically what it was. We think it was a genetic heart condition that just suddenly decided to show itself and there was nothing that could be done. Right, I'm going to go now. Thanks so much for watching everybody. If you haven't already subscribed, please do. I promise I don't cry in all my videos. Um, hit that thumbs up button if you've enjoyed this video and I'll see you in our next one. Thanks everyone. Bye. Full stop Can't believe I live in your thoughts I think about you all the time Morning, evening and midnight such a wonderful delight Forgo Give up everything that I own Yeah, I'd give it all up now Just to be with you somehow Unexpected love was found You're the rose in a garden if I'm honest